previously on Velocity Steve. Many good stories in aviation begin with There I Was. Well, there I was last July, cleared to land at Oshkosh, runway 36, purple dot, which I hit. But on rollout and decelerating, things get a little wiggy with that nose wheel right about now. All right, that was pretty ugly, but let's back this train up and see what went wrong. Yeah, unfortunately, it was otherwise a really nice arrival at Oshkosh. Um, you could maybe see that uh, it wasn't very crowded. This was early Thursday morning. Last year, um, I mean, if you recall, it was very chaotic getting in on the weekend. Super high traffic. It made like four or five attempts to finally get my way onto 3-6 two summers ago. And, uh, you know, this last year I said, nope, I'm not going to do that again. So I decided to arrive really early. Anyway, so as we fly backwards, um, I'm flying backwards to Dodge County, which was a my rest stop and fuel stop uh, before the final push into Oshkosh. Here's my reverse uh, left turn on the, on the base. Anyway, stopped at Dodge County, which I'll show you here in a second. Got some gas. Well, let's just cut there. All right, here's this scene at Dodge County um, Uniform, November Uniform, I think is the identifier there. And uh, yeah, I've made, I made the stop at uh, this airport in prior visits uh, leading up to Oshkosh. Some great folks, local EAA chapter are, are uh, very friendly, provide the, the usual breakfast of champions, scrambled eggs, pancakes, a cup of coffee, uh, just what every would-be pilot needs. Um, the other interesting thing to note here at Dodge County, it's the staging ground for, or staging airport for the Cessna folks. So I was surrounded by 182s and 206s and Skyhawks, but um, they let me get gas just the same. So pre-flight complete. Pre-flight checks complete, got the engine started. Sorry for the wiggly video, but that's just an artifact of the camera being way out on the wingtip and high on the vertical stabilizer. Yeah, uh, also <laughs> making sure I don't make a rookie mistake that I made the year prior, and that was to not save the various waypoints leading into the Oshkosh, the arrival, various waypoints there. Uh, make sure they're loaded in memory. So yeah, it was it was uh, <laughs> as I mentioned previously, the prior summer I I made a mistake. I changed waypoints and then lost the whole route. So that was a mistake I was not going to make again. All right, so let's jump ahead and get that door closed here in three, two, one. Lock lever comes forward. Make sure all four pins are engaged. And now here's here's the whole point of where I'm headed with this. So my normal procedure is when I take the runway, I will align the nose straight down the center line of the runway. And what I'm trying to accomplish is get the nose wheel that is free castering. Okay, there's a little bit of damping there. Well, we'll get to that a little bit later in the video. But right, so here I'm taking the runway, getting the nose right on the center and my right hand is now moved to a lever on the center console that pushes a wire forward and drops a pin into the nose wheel fork. And that should have locked the nose wheel. It's a lot like a locking tail wheel for those of you who fly tail wheel aircraft, except, well, it's the nose wheel. And what this pin does, it prevents the nose wheel from rotating really just more than a degree, plus or minus left or right. And it's to prevent shimmy. Right, but clearly that pin didn't find its home in the fork, and well, that's why we ended up with that crazy shopping cart vibration. And speaking of vibration, I, kn I know the video looks pretty wiggly, and trust me, uh, the airplane is not <laughs> vibrating as much as it appears in this video. Like I said, the camera's way out on a cantilever wing and another cantilever on the vertical stabilizer and there's just no damping whatsoever so before you write in your comments that, that the airplane's going to shake itself apart it's not 
let's get this thing in the hanger, get a close look at that nose wheel. But first, let's, uh, let's address the elephant in the room. The elephant is, is the rugs. Yeah, I get a lot of grief from my airport buddies about the rugs, but I secretly think they're just jealous. Anyways, the reason for the rugs in the hangar is because we have a little dog, Henrietta, and over the years, Henrietta has, well, she's just ruined a lot of rugs. So instead of going to the dump, they go to the hangar. Well, while we're waiting for the hangar door to close, let's provide a little bit more clarity about how the locking pin is used during the takeoff roll. To be clear, I've never had any issues whatsoever during takeoff when the pin is fully engaged and the nose wheel fork is being held rigid. Directional control is provided by differential braking from say zero airspeed to about 40 knots. And then once uh, the airplane is faster than 40 knots, then the rudders begin to be effective. Never had any issues. So with respect to landing, same holds true. Never any issues with crosswind landings, etc. So when I do complete the landing roll and decelerate to taxi speed, then the lever comes back, the pin is disengaged, and the fork is free to rotate, and I clear the runway as normal. Okay, while I'm still in talking head mode, let's finally take a look at this mechanism. Here, the nose of the airplane is pointing off to the right, and I've already removed the wheel pant. Uh, here's the two brackets that support the, uh, the front of the wheel pant. Here's the, the gear leg that goes up to the bottom of the nose, the fork itself, and a portion of the tire. Okay, finally, this next bit is where it gets interesting. This is the housing that contains the pin that drops vertically into the rather kludgy looking uh, base plate that itself is of itself secured to the fork via the socket head cap screws. Note that this housing is rigidly attached to the fork and cannot rotate. Over to the other side, you'll see that there are a stack of about six steel Belleville washers and each one of these washers requires about a thousand pounds to fully compress. So when the nut on the bottom of the fork is rotated and tightened, it creates a very high compressive load. Um, and this is where the damping comes from. However, this design is pretty limited. Even though you have a very high compressive load, effectively there's only one friction pair between the fork and the gear leg, one sliding set. So while this system is used on a number of velocities effectively, and maybe a lot of other airplanes with nose wheels, my opinion is not really particularly robust, at least not for me. Uh, primarily because if there's any loss of compression or relaxation of these Belleville springs, or there's some contamination that impacts the friction characteristics, well, then the damping characteristics are also deteriorated. I think we can do better. The next step was to do a little design work in Onshape, and then place an order for a phenolic receiver and a new base plate from Send Cut Send. By the way, the fork is now rotated 180 degrees forward, and you can also see the locking pin fully extended. Unfortunately, I didn't have better luck with the phenolic as it seemed to be just as sticky as the original aluminum piece with the bronze bushing. So, back to the virtual drawing board. Well, I took a step back and thought, well, why not make the hole into a slot to further reduce the potential of friction of the locking pin? Well, now this in turn sent me down a whole new approach, leveraging 3D printing, to fabricate different prototypes and ultimately design a mechanism that will have some self-centering characteristics to speed the process of aligning and locking the fork as I enter the runway. So here's, here's my um, museum of PLA, PLA, PETG, and polycarbonate different concepts that I've been experimenting with over the last several weeks. One of the early designs, again with the slot feature for the locating pin, was to use a single wave, very gradual, uh, that would, uh, again, the whole objective here is to allow the nose wheel to center up and then so the pin drops in very easily. Uh, I did some taxi testing with this. You saw, some, uh, saw it on the, on the airplane a little bit earlier. Didn't work so great, was rather disappointed uh, with that. So then I evolved into 
instead of one large wave, four nodes or four waves. In this instance, these are four positive on this piece, and then there's a mate, right, for the top piece. Um, yeah, and then that worked okay. And then further evolution, um, I've got this contraption, this text, test, test mechanism. The handle represents the fork where I'm holding here between my, uh, my, my left hand would be the gear leg, which is fixed. And you could see that um, kind of snaps into position. By the way, in this design, I've got, hopefully you can see that, a, a wave washer, care of McMaster car, that uh, applies some compressive load between the um, wave washer elements. Right? So it snaps into position pretty easily. And also, um, in the final configuration, I have two positive and two negative nodes, which again will limit the amount of total rotation for, for the steering angle to, uh, to about I don't know, 85 degrees each direction or so. Plenty of room, plenty of, uh, plenty of rotation allow me to clear the runway after I've come to a stop and disengage the pin. Let's head out to the airport and get some of this hardware installed and do some taxi testing. All right, I know you guys are astute, so you'll notice in this shot, the nose wheel pant is installed, but in the very next clip I'm gonna show you in a moment, it's not there. This is what I have for B-roll, so let's just roll with it and pardon the pun. All right, what we're looking at here is my inexpensive GoPro knockoff camera that is temporarily attached to the pitot probe underneath the canard and obviously looking down at, uh, well, the nose wheel. And as mentioned, nose wheel pants been removed. So what I have installed here is the uh, polycarbonate 3D printed upper and lower plate that I showed you a moment ago. And just doing some stop and go turns, uh, trying to just get a feel for how the mechanism centers. And it worked pretty well. Okay, at first glance, everything looks pretty, uh, pretty decent, uh, pretty healthy. Um, yeah, no cracks. Nothing out of position. I think it's good. So, well, the uh, next step will be to make these uh, parts out of metal. Uh, I know PCB Way offers CNC and also 3D printing of some metallics. I'll investigate that. Maybe there's some other sources for rapid prototypes. Uh, but uh, yeah, that'll be the next step. Get those ordered uh, next day or two. And then uh, hopefully within a week or however long it takes, get the metal parts uh, uh, reinstalled and then uh, do some flight testing. So I'm pretty excited about this. I, I think I got a way forward. Well, we got a package. And there's Henrietta. Well, all right, like every other would-be YouTuber, you'll watch me open a package. Got a nice uh, PCB Way box. No, they're not a sponsor. Be nice though. Took them about, um, uh, three weeks total, I think, for placement of order to today. So let's see what we got. First impressions looks pretty good. Second impressions is I paid for it to be yellow uh, powder coated, so that's disappointing. But the surface finish is decent. So a little bit of a ridge here. Was. Powder coated in yellow. Ooh, yeah. Yep. So 
Sorry, it's hard for me to keep them aligned. <laughs> kind of get get the idea there. Well, overall, I think this will work. So at this point in the video, you're probably screaming at me, why didn't you just use an active damper like a Scott's damper you used on motorcycle handlebars? Yeah, I could have, and I might end up there at some point. Truth be told, uh, they were rather they were rather expensive, um, and I still wanted to continue with the locking mechanism or theory of operation. It works well when it works, right? So uh, the other aspect or difficulty with the uh, active damper is that it's big and kind of hangs out there. It looks, my word, kludgy, right? There are a lot of velocities that utilize it, but they're retractable gear velocities, so they really don't, the RG guys really don't care about the aerodynamics or frankly the aesthetics of having an active damper. Me, uh, with a wheel pan on the nose wheel, uh, I just wanted to avoid that um, extra mass hanging out in the slipstream. Could I package a damper to make it work? Yeah, I probably could, but maybe that's a video for later. Well, I did make it out to the airport and got those CNC uh, aluminum pieces installed, but since we're well north of 15 minutes of this video already, I'll spare you those details. So yeah, nice Sunday afternoon, light winds out of the west. Here I am, lining up on runway 26, getting into position, advancing forward a little bit, and now pretty confident that the wheel is centered up, you know, dropping the pin in, and dropping the pin in, and there we go. All right, sorry again for the Jell-O video, it's best I can do. And of course, I had two or three good landings that uh, that afternoon, but the battery ran down and I can't share those with you. But they look good. Trust me. All right, just to demonstrate the new lever for the nose wheel lock. Let's, uh, well, let's demonstrate. So fully released, uh, the catch is up. So uh, when I'm on a center line on the runway, ready to depart, lever comes forward, latch comes down. So it's fully secure. And then um, fast forward, I've now landed, decelerated to taxi speed, a little bit of forward pressure on the lever, catch comes up, and back. And then it's fully well, it was a nice sunny Sunday afternoon, so I thought I'd head up here to the hangar. Just completed a half hour test flight with uh, several touch and go, well, actually full stop landings. And the gear handled wonderfully, right? The uh, lever went forward very easily, um, dropping the pin into position, no oscillations whatsoever. I just took a peek at the, uh, at the washers down at the nose wheel and everything looks fine. So I, at this point, I'm gonna declare victory and say, uh, say this one's a win. All right, everybody, thanks for watching and see you next time.